Go ahead, draw. Yeah, draw from the monster bag, dude. No, you gotta draw from the monster bag, man. That's that's what it says. There's a monster that needs to be here. You rolled a crappy roll. You gotta draw from the monster bag, man. Draw. Come on. Okay, fine. I'll just do it for you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Join the team. Hey, this is the McGuire Review, and let's get locked in. All right, today we are going to be taking a look at a brand new expansion for Elder Sign, which is Omens of the Pharaoh. Now, this one is a little bit different, I would say, than some of the ones that have come out so far. I don't have all of the ones that have come out so far. I am missing, I believe, just the Gates of Arkham, but I do have the unseen forces here and i do have the uh omens of ice expansions i'm always a sucker for the frost ice expansions on all these games uh that fantasy flights actually ha had come out like talisman and and runebound or, or, or any of them really that come out that have this frost expansion i don't know what it is i always want to buy that one uh that one just jumps out to me but this one here omens of the pharaoh is actually a really really cool expansion and we're going to go through some of the new mechanics that we have here with this one and what to me i think makes this one really jump out and stand out as a really really strong expansion okay so it does expand the main game elder sign if you don't have the base game obviously you would have to pick this up to be able to play the omens of the pharaoh expansion or any of these other expansions that i have here uh, and you can see the base game here it's a pretty small form factor as well as the expansions and it would essentially include uh what you would see right in front of you here i mean minus the pharaoh stuff all of these cards here really come with this expansion uh, but just looking at the footprint of the game, this is about what you're going to have uh, in the base set as well. I really like this game, and the reason why is because I've always loved Arkham Horror. That's a great game. It's a lot of fun, but it takes generally quite a bit of time to play a game like Arkham Horror, where this gives you the Arkham Horror feel in under an hour. I can play through one of these games in about 40 to 45 minutes, uh, definitely solo I can play through that fast and with probably one other person uh, easily under an hour with uh, one or more and that's just it's a quick game it's really a dice game at heart you're going to be rolling dice pretty much every time on your turn and being able to unlock these various areas and uh, well cards but areas that you're traveling to and there'll be different criteria on these cards where you'll have to roll these symbols sometimes in order sometimes however you want to roll those symbols but you can only do one task at a time so elder sign has been out for a little while now so i don't want to go over a lot of the in-depth rules here but we will um, call some things out as we start to do some gameplay i'm going to do some gameplay in this video here at the end but I do want to hit some of the things that you're going to find they're going to be different in this expansion. You are going to get a little rule book that's included. It is very small, kind of a pamphlet style rule book. It's just got a few pages, uh, well, pamphlet style pages to kind of read to, and that's it. That's your whole rule book right there, and it's going to list out all the new things that you're gonna that you're gonna get. Um, bear, hold on. Okay. I was kind of in the face, wasn't it? Sorry about that. So one of the things that's going to be new in this particular version of the game is you're going to get these new things called artifacts. And it's a new little card. You know, before, through the base game and through the expansions, you got more of the common and the special and the spell and the ally cards. You are going to get some new, uh, some new versions of those cards for the decks to shuffle in. Uh, definitely some cool new allies. And you're going to get a brand new type, which is called the artifact here. And it's got this little, like raw eye on it that's pretty cool and these are just more powerful items and you'll see there are two green die um, you can add two green die you can re-roll two green die what's special about these artifacts is even if the die has been taken out um, as part of your rolling and it's kind of out of your pool these artifacts allow you to actually get those re-rolls on dies even if they're outside of your pool where your standard you know yellow and red die add once you roll those and they're out of the pool they're out of the pool for your turn and that's what makes these artifacts uh fairly powerful 
The artifacts are special for this version of the expansion, but if you do want to use them in other uh, versions of the game, like the base game, other expansions, you can do that by flipping this card right over here. This is our expedition card. So if we flip this over, and I'll explain what the expedition card is, but if we flip it over, we get the exhibit. And this is just a special way to be able to incorporate your artifacts here in other versions of the game. And that's the only use that you're going to have for that, the other side of this card. Something that's new here, uh, we do have the Outer World cards, which is something that is standard, but something that's new is these two decks. And they went about it a little bit differently than they did in some of the other games where you have a deck of cards that you'll pull from and you'll populate those out onto the board. There is Act 1 and Act 2. So uh, the cards are a little bit different. They're actually double-sided in this one. So you got a uh, back there, which is always sort of accessible, and you can always see the top card. Everybody can see that. And then on the other side looks like what your standard uh, you know, cards would look like. Um, that you would you normally would see with gameplay here. And these work a little bit different. You're going to start out with these Act 1 cards. And they have a little a little Roman numeral 1 there at the bottom, and the 2 have a little, little 2 at the bottom. And these are going to represent probably easier cards, I would say, part of Act 1 or part of Cairo. And we'll talk about this area here that we can go to because there's actually two areas in the game and each of those areas correspond with one of these decks. Cairo is with deck one and Dashir is with deck two. So deck two is going to be a little bit more difficult than deck one I would say. Deck one you're going to find a lot of your exploration tokens. We'll talk about that. You're going to find a lot of materials to bulk up on and get ready to go out uh, to the fight, right? Bring the, bring the, bring the game the fight. Bring the fight, bear! And Egg Deck 2 is going to be more of your Elder Signs. Getting these Elder Signs are going to be a little bit more difficult. Being able to get these to lock down the main boss before he comes out and you have to basically fight all Doom, which would be him. And we'll talk about how that mechanic works. But that's how these two decks are going to work. And that's going to be a difference in what we've seen from the past, having these two different decks. And the players, over the course of game, get to choose which deck they're pulling these cards from as they flip this card here. So we're going to jump right up here to this card because this is a new component as well. And you can think of this almost as, you know, from the base game, you sort of had that museum shop that you could go to that was part of the museum, and you could purchase things uh, with the uh, points that you would have acquired over the game as, a, you know, beating these different areas, you would get, you know, this many uh, trophy points. There's a little number right up on top of these cards. That's how much these cards are worth. And for so many trophies, you could cash in and you could get things in that shop. Well, this is very similar. One side is Cairo and one side as Dashir. And what's nice about that is each of these areas do different things. Um, so, for instance, Cairo here, for six trophies, you can gain one expedition token. We'll talk about that here next. Five trophies, you gain one ally. Four trophies, gain one unique spell uh, or unique item. Three trophies, two trophies, etc., etc. So it has different things. One of the new things on this card, though, is if you start your turn on this card, so you've decided to stay there, you can choose to advance the clock, which our clock is right here. Uh, and that's going to advance at the end of everybody's turn automatically. But you can choose to advance that again. And by doing that, you would flip this card. And now you're traveling out, or well, thematically, now you're traveling out of Cairo and into Dashir, into the desert, into the darkness, into the fight. And within Dashir, you can do the same thing. You can choose to advance the clock. If you wanted to do that, to go back to Cairo. If you wanted to bulk up, maybe have a little bit of a few easier you know, scenarios to run through, or these cards that you would be running through. I like to call them little little mini quests. Uh, if you want some easier ones, you might want to go back to Cairo and bulk up on various things. Or if you're looking to get those Elder Signs, you're going to want to keep it in Dashir and, and do some exploration there. But you'll be able to do different things in Dashir. So for six trophies, you gain one Relic. Three trophies, gain one Clue. One trophy, discard the top card of either Adventure deck. Now, you may ask, well, why would you want to discard the top card card of any one of the adventure decks so we'll go we'll go there next and i've just got my little my character tokens set here I'll, I'll start the game with them setting right there and then i'll move them to a location well 
you'll look at these decks here and they do all have a little symbol at the top, okay? A little skull and crossbones. And that's going to be green or it's going to be a red or it's going to be yellow. Let's see if we can find a yellow one here. Here's a yellow one. It's going to be green, red, or yellow. And obviously that's going to signify if it's a little bit of an easier card, a little bit harder, or the hardest type of card that's going to be available. That may dictate where you may want to move to, because when you start the game, three of the cards will be face up, as uh, you can see exactly what they are here and what you're going to be running into from a die roll perspective, and three of them will be face down. And after you, you know, take cards out, you'll always replace them then, you know, with their backsides up, and you'll have to pay something called an entry fee, which is right down here at the bottom. And these here that you start with have that as well. They're just randomly drawn out and put there. So, for instance, this one says, at midnight, add one Doom token to the Doom track unless an investigator discards one relic. So that's one of these things where if it's sitting out still and it hits midnight, that's going to hit you. And that's, that's another mechanic about this game that plays out over lots of different things. You want to kind of watch for terror and you want to watch for cards that say, at midnight something happens. Because you want to get those off the board as quickly as possible, because when midnight strikes, you don't want to get hit with four or five different things that sort of nail your characters, because you have these type of cards still sitting out, and you haven't gone to them and explored them before the clock made it all the way around to midnight again. And every time there's a turn and when you have to advance the clock, it's by a quarter, so it's not just one tick, it's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole quarter, okay? So that's an example of that. Let's look at some of these other entries. So you may regain one sanity or one stamina. Okay, that's actually a, a good entry. If I went there, I could gain a stamina or, 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 uh, or sanity, if I could get that out. Uh, you must either spend two stamina or advance the clock. So that's one that's going to be a little bit against you. you got to cash in the stamina or you got to advance the clock one to be able to flip this card and then now get in. Now... It isn't a turn just to flip the card. It, it that you're just paying an entry fee if you're able to pay that and going in and then allowing yourself to go through that card. Okay, and so that's how the new deck is going to work, and that's how you're going to draw from that deck, whether you're on a Cairo or Dashir, either Act One or Act Two. Now the expedition is a brand new component as well where as you're going through these cards, you're gonna find a lot of these expedition tokens here in Act One you'll get those as rewards. So again, at the bottom of your card, and we'll just use this one here, these are the things that, you know, mess you up if you aren't able to accomplish your tasks at hand by your die rolls. These are the things that are going to happen to you. And on these cards, you'll get these two or these two, and you'll choose. If it's got a little line between it, you choose what you're going to get hit with. On the other side there would be the benefit. If you're able to beat the card, you then would get uh, those you know, benefits of this card, which would be a clue token, a, a, a special item, and a, and a spell. And you're going to be looking for those, you're really going to be looking for those Elder Signs. My strategy when I play this game, and I tend to win this game generally always, I don't know that I've ever actually lost this game, to tell you the truth, um, where I don't want that to come off as, oh, this game's just super easy, because I have played this game a ton. I'm just particularly good at this game. I know it's a dice rolling game, and it is down to the chance of the dice roll, but if you play your numbers right, and you play your, you know, giving yourself the best odds with the with the items that you have and you acquire over the course of game, I've, I've found that if you really play your odds right, and you really make the strategy to just go for those Elder Signs, very rarely has this you know, boss, and, and there are quite a few of these. You'll randomly select one to start the game. This is one of the new ones that come with the new expansion. It's the main guy from the new expansion. Generally, they're not going to be able to get out on me uh, because once they come out, it's kind of to the final battle. Everything else is sort of disregarded, and you're just fighting this, this main guy, and they are very difficult to beat. I've only had, I believe, once, maybe twice out of probably probably 12 games. I've probably played this about 12 times, maybe 15. I don't know. I've only had once or twice where this guy was actually able to get out before I was able to lock him down with Elder Signs. Not this guy specifically, but but one of the bosses. And uh, we were able to kill, we were able to kill him uh, because we had a, a lot of good items and it just happened to be the boss that, that escaped. We were, we were able to take him down. The game is a lot of fun, uh, to say the least. And, and I, I am particularly good at this game and I can claim that, which, you know, 
you know, every, every once in a while, squirrel finds a nut, you know? I mean, uh, it's just the way it goes. The bear reminds me, Josh, get back to the thing at task, which is the expedition. These will give you bonuses over the course of gameplay. You'll get these little tokens here, and you'll be able to set these little tokens over these spots, and they will give you different benefits. Like, I'll read a couple of these. You may add the yellow die for free when resolving a Dark Pharaoh special adventure. Ooh, Dark Pharaoh, what's that? We'll go there next. Do not return mask monster markers to the cup when you claim them. They now have a trophy value of two. So if you've played this game before, mask monsters are a certain type of monster that will be in my little monster bag here. This does not come with the game. This is mine. Uh, I like this little bag, and this is where I keep the monsters. So there are a monster type called mask monsters that aren't worth any trophy value. Other monsters are. Your cards are worth trophy values. Mask monsters are not. If you were able to get this little expedition bonus, they then would be worth a trophy value of two. So you can see there's quite a few. There's eight different types of bonuses that you're going to get. And one thing that you really want to do strategy-wise for this is go for these expedition tokens and load this thing up as much as you can. Some of them are kind of cashed in when you use the benefit. Some of them stay there passively the entire game. You want to load this thing up as much as possible because it will give you that bonus and that benefit for the win. Again, optimize your roll chance with your extra dies based on the items that you have. When you get those items, use them. Optimize your chances because you're going to pick up more items when you beat cards. So if you're always making your chances the best they can and you always have the best chance of beating a card, you're going to continually cycle in and out items. Don't be that player that just hoards up all these items and never uses them until the big fight. That's what makes this game really difficult. Use your items and optimize your dice roll chance and use the expedition to give you benefits over the course of game passively. I can't recommend that more from a strategy perspective playing this version of the game or any version of this game. Okay, let's hit the Dark Pharaoh cards because they're a brand new component as well. The Dark Pharaoh cards will actually trigger end game, bring the big bad guy out. Uh, if all four of them get put into play, and there are four, there are more than four, you'll draw some randoms here, so it is a little bit different. Uh, there are more of these. So you will pull these out, you will put them on the board, and whenever you get a uh, Dark Pharaoh a Doom spot on this card, one will come into play. Now that's another new thing for the boss here. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see, but there are little tiny uh, images here. One is the standard Doom image, which correlates this little Doom token here. And there's various things over the course of the game that will make you put a little token on this board. And once all of those spots are filled up, if you haven't locked this guy down Elder Sign style, He's coming out to reap no mercy, okay? No mercy from these guys. So you want to take them out before they can get uh, up out of the depths of hell. Of hell. So every time you get one of these little Dark Pharaoh symbols and you place a Doom token on those, that's when that will activate one of the Dark Pharaoh cards. And they're just like any of these other cards. They come out, um, they generally are a little bit more difficult, I've found, but you want to take these out as soon as they come out uh, because you don't want them stacking up on you. Next thing you know, you got four of them out and then you're, and then you're hosed. Okay? There is another type of card in, in this. It's a little bit different. It's called a uh, secret chamber. I believe it's what it's called. Um, let's see if we can find one here. Here's an example of one, Chamber of the Sun. So these are a little bit different. They have an entry... Uh, we'll call it fee that actually has a dice roll, a die roll, right? So you only get one shot for this one. You can add dice to it, but it isn't like dice roll when you do gameplay where you can roll and if, okay, you messed up, um, you take some dice out, you roll again, or you roll and it was a success, okay, pick it up, roll. It's not that deal. It's you got to roll three investigation, two investigation, one scroll, and a terror. And again, you can use items to bulk up on your die, get all them dice pick up for your optimal roll. And let's just say I had to do this, I would roll, okay? Uh, all right, well, let's see what we got here. I got the three. Um, I got a three, which would make a two. I got a scroll. I didn't get a terror. So, see, I didn't make it. And you only get one shot to try to get in. So if you fail, it's like, okay, I failed to get in entry. I, I'll go on to another card. 
But if you're able to get that one shot, one roll uh, entry there for these new secret chamber cards, there are a stockpile generally. Uh, if you're able to beat them, you don't just get it automatically. You get in, and then you have to defeat the tasks. It has three tasks at hand here, and you can do those in any order because it doesn't have the arrow. But if you're able to beat it, you get three Elder Signs. So whenever these guys come out on the board, you are definitely going to want to try to beat that card and get that entry at the beginning of each one of your turns because that's going to really give you a bulk amount of these Elder Signs. Generally, you'll get one Elder Sign on a card. Sometimes two if it's a red card and or an Otherworld card. You will get two sometimes, but you know these are going to really give you a good bulk of that. Okay, last thing that's different here with this version of the expansion is our Mythos cards. Now again, you're going to start off the game with a Mythos card. Every time it hits midnight, you're going to get a Mythos card that's going to activate. These, for this version, you do not want to mix in with any other version. They are specifically for the Omens of the Pharaoh expansion edition. Okay. How these would be used is when you drew one, they have a top and a bottom. And the group is going to decide whether they want to do the top or the bottom, okay? You're not going to do both. You're going to do the top or the bottom. Now, if you do get one that looks like this, that and sometimes they have it just on the top. Let's find an example of that. Um, I saw one a second ago. Come on. Saw one. Double, 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 double. Here. Here's one that only has the bottom. You're going to see that some of these cards have this little, it's like a greenish background, with like little tentacles, Okay, that is if you want to play the expert version of this game. Every time you decide to choose one that has the tentacles, or, a, or in this case, doesn't really matter, they both do, you would also add one to the Doom uh, counter here. One to the Doom. You put a Doom token on the, on the Doom thing, okay? And obviously that just makes the game uh, that much harder because the more faster, the more faster, that isn't right, um, the faster you are building up this doom track the closer you're going to get to uh having to fight uh, all terror here okay so those are all the new components of the game and those are all the new i would say mechanics of this expansion so you can see going through all of that there's quite a bit new with this new expansion that we have here quite a bit so i think what we'll do now just to give people a flavor for what game looks like if you have never played this game before. Again, if you know you have played this game and you know exactly what this is about, you're probably done with this video at this point because I've gone over everything that would be new and in addition to anything that you might have already experienced. What we're going to do now is just a few minutes, I'm going to try to keep it to a few minutes, of actual gameplay of what it would look like uh, with our characters. So I do have two characters here that we've got. Uh, I uh, use old Mrs. Crane here, Agantha, and uh, Father Mateo. These are uh, favorites of mine, and I'm going to use these two characters for our example today. And it will show, if you look at this card here, what your starting um, stanima, your sanity here, and your stanima. Sanity is the little brain, stanima is the little heart. It's four and six. They do have different starting items, and they do have different abilities. And you'll find that right here, the starting items for each character, as well as some special abilities you'll see right down there as well. So let's just look at Father Mateo's here. Father Mateo starts with a clue token and an ally, which is actually pretty powerful. You can cash these clue tokens in if you want to do re-rolls of die. So you want to get as many of these clue tokens as possible as well. It's another good uh, tactic and strategy. Bulk up on them clue tokens because when you get the re-rolls, really good, okay? Get an ally. Let's just pick one here. Professor Armitage, yes! Place two spells on Professor Armitage when he joins you. You may use these spells as if they were your own. Okay, so you'd basically just take two spells, you'd place those uh, on Professor here, and you can use those as they were your own. Okay, she starts with a knife, which is a special item, and a spell. Spells generally give you uh, die locks, so over the course of the game you can choose, I like that die, I'm going to lock it, and you, but it stays on your card, but then you can use it at a later point in time. And then a special item, which this is the Healing Stone. <coughs> Before rolling, discard to fully restore your stamina and sanity. That is an awesome item. Okay, great job, Agatha. Okay, so our characters are now ready to go and start the game. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, Father Matteo goes first. Very quickly, though, their special powers hollowed ground once per day. When Matteo moves to an adventure, he may either ignore its entry effect or pay three trophies to ignore the effect printed on the back of that adventure card. So he's got a really nice ability where once per day he can ignore the entry effect of a card. So we talked about those entry effects down there. He can ignore that and just go right in. Um, or he can pay three trophies um, to ignore that. So Or pay three trophies to ignore the effect printed on the back of the adventure card. So again, he can jump in there for free uh, once per day, Okay, once per all the way around. Or once you're in, sometimes there's effects that are printed up on these cards. You can pay three trophies to discard that. So this one is uh, uh, discard one common item. So I can do that, or Father Mateo, if he's got a bunch of trophies where he's beaten a bunch of these cards and or monsters, I just cash in up to three points of that and then not have to do that. So he's got a really nice ability. Uh, Agnetha here, each time Agnetha loses one or more sanity, she gains one clue. That is a sick ability, okay? Every time she loses one or more stanima, she gains a clue token, okay? Very nice, very nice there. You may want to put her strategically in positions where she's purposefully losing sanity to bulk up on those clue tokens because those clue tokens let you roll the die. Again, you got to keep all these things in mind when you're playing this game. Always optimize your die roll chance. It's a dice game, guys, okay? All right, start this off. Let's hit our Mythos card. What do we got here? One investigator loses three stanima, okay? Um, or we can do two monsters up here. Uh... All right, let's see. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two monsters up here. So we're gonna get. We're gonna pull from the monster bag, going into the custom leather, custom leather monster bag, and we have a mask monster. Okay, this is a mask monster. Teller of Tales. Ooh, uh, looks pretty brutal. Okay, um, what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna look at our cards and it's okay. We got one right here, so we can set that right there. We're gonna pull our second one. <clears throat> okay, another mask monster. And this one, oh man, this one's brutal too. Good lord. Thing in the yellow mask, yeah. Ah, okay. Now there isn't anywhere else to put, you know, monsters on the board like we had on this one card here that had an open spot. Uh, some of these cards that look like this that have this little ghosted gray looking spot. That's where you place a monster. Um, so there's none other that are open. You think, oh, we'll just throw it back in the bag because I, yeah, I can't put it on the board. No, that's not the way it works. You actually have to pick another card and make it just sort of a bottom row for another one. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. This has started brutal. I'm going to, oh my God. All right, we're going to put it right here. This is, this is going to be, oh man. Okay, that was not good. Okay, so Agnetha, oh no, Mateo, Mateo's starting here. Mateo is going to, um, may I regain one sanity or one stamina. I don't really need that yet. Oh, you know what? This card right here has the yellow die locked, so we'll put that there. You know what? I'm just going to take him right there because I want to get that yellow die opened up, and it will give me an ally and a clue token. I have to roll four investigation and one skull. And then on a second task for investigation, and I can do those in any order. Now I don't have anything right now, and and obvious and, and also I would have kind of tokens here on either on either player that would represent you know my life and my sanity, uh, and those would get you know taken away over the course of of uh, playing the game. And I don't have exactly right what I would have, but that's how that would work, and you would divvy those off as you you know took the damage. I don't have anything right now with him to be able to gain any extra you know dice. The red one would be the only one available because the yellow is locked. Um, I have this spell after rolling defeat one monster card. Okay. Hmm. I should have been smart about that because this probably would have been an easier card to beat. And I did have that spell of being able to, uh, after rolling discard, to automatically defeat one monster. But I didn't go there, so I'm not going to back out. I'll keep that card. And I know that now Mateo, between the two characters, is probably best suited to take on either one of these monster cards uh, because he has that spell. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll. I can do either one, so let's see what we got. Now it will dictate where I go here. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead. I rolled a skull, and those are fairly rare. Uh, only one of those on the die. So I'm going to go ahead and do the three and the one. So the three investigation side, the one, that adds up to four, which gives me my four there and my skull there. Okay, one of my tasks is now complete. Now what I have to do, and that was a success, so I don't have to lose any die and then re-roll. If it's a fail, you lose a die. I have to roll four investigations within this one, and I do have a clue token, so if I have to use that, I absolutely will because I want to beat this and get another clue token, so I'll just refresh it, and I want to pick up that ally. Okay. Okay, I got a two, a one, and a scroll, which is a fail. Okay, and there's a couple different situation, situational things I can do here. I can kick out a die and try to re-roll again. I can, um, uh, it is a failed roll, so I can focus a die and then re-roll. I can, you can only do that once, and, and it has to be on a complete fail. Uh, and this is a complete fail for this task. So, the other thing I can do is I can spend my clue token and re-roll. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus, and if I focus a die, one goes out and I have to re-roll, which means I have to roll a two. Uh, I don't know. That really lowers my chance. Um, I'm probably better off in this situation. I'm going to set this die aside. I'm not, I'm not focusing it yet. I'm going to set it aside, and I'm going to use my clue token now to re-roll these two dice. I can re-roll one, two. I can re-roll them all. I'm going to re-roll these two dice, and hopefully I get enough for the... For the oop, oop, it's off the table. It doesn't count. I know. Yes! And I got it. I got a three and a one, which is enough to beat the four. So this card would be now successfully beat. Yellow die unlocks and is available for everybody again. I do get to claim this card. My guy sort of goes back to this card. And uh, because it's on Cairo, I would choose the next one uh, from the deck. And I can see, oh, can we see the top card of what's kind of coming? Okay. What this does is this, oh, this had an entry fee, which I skipped. So entry, add one doom token to the doom track unless you discard an ally. Uh, I don't want to do that because my ally has got my spells and I believe if I discard him before I use these spells, the spells would go as well. So I am going to add one to the Doom uh, track here and that is a Dark Pharaoh. So a Dark Pharaoh card does come out and come into play. And I'll set these up here so it's clear that we're not uh, that those are not in play. Okay, So Dark Pharaoh card is now in play. You can put it right there. Uh, and it does have a back. It has a, you know, you have to do something to get into it. So you want to get there before it hits midnight, because this one at midnight, one Doom token is added to the Doom track. Whew. All right, but I got the card, which means I do gain a clue token for a prize, and I also gain another ally, and allies are really powerful. Thomas Malone. Place one sanity token on Thomas F. Malone to change one die, showing a scroll result to a skull result. Discard this card when there are four tokens on it. Okay, that's going to be kind of like a counter. You're going to grab one of these sanity tokens. And you're going to put it on them there. Uh, we'll just use a single, not a three. All right, and now every time you do that, you add a sanity token. Um, so, you know, that's kind of your counter for it. And once it gets four sanity tokens, you discard this ally. He's, he's, uh, he's provided his service to you already, and he's done. This card is only worth two trophies. And I'm now going to gain that. It's going to go over here in my sort of trophy pile. And now I do have two trophies that I can use to spend down the road if I need to. Okay. Now the next turn would play out the same way. Agatha would go. She would choose a location. I'd probably send her to the Dark Pharaoh card here to flip that and try to interact with that. Maybe I can pick up some expedition tokens on one of these cards. I don't see any of these giving awards of expedition tokens. So I'm going to start trying to just burn through these cards as fast as I can to try to get some of these expedition tokens to build this up. And that's essentially how the game is going to be played out. It is a dice rolling game. You're going to keep acquiring items. Those items are going to help you beat the game. You're going to have to watch that clock. Yep, at the end of my turn, I would have advanced that clock one quarter of the way uh, because now it is the start of the next person's turn. And you do want to remember that. That is a key to playing this game. Remember to advance that clock at the end of your turn. 
Um, so, you know, because if you don't do that, you're not really playing per rules and it's going to get kind of often you're going to forget and you're going to be like, oh, how many times do I need to advance it? Was it two? Was it three? Just keep remembering at the end of my turn, I got to advance this clock. And always be watching this guy in your doom track to make sure that it isn't filling up. Okay. That is Elder Sign. That is, that is basically how this game is played, regardless of what expansion you have. But again, we've gone over how awesome this new Omens of the Pharaohs expansion is. And I can't wait to see more for this platform. I love this game. I think it does a great job. It scratches the Arkham Horror itch. You feel like you're playing Arkham Horror. I mean, I really do. I feel like after I play one of these games, I've got that Arkham Horror experience, but simplified and streamlined in a very simple card slash dice game. So Fantasy Flight Games, great job on this one. And keep them coming. So hit that like, click the subscribe below to join the team, ring the bell. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time. Roll them crits!